Hello everybody, my name is Nathan Sifu, and welcome to Mass Effect 3. Let's play. I apologize for being so frank, Commander, but your plan feels doomed to failure. We know. We've been there before. But Madam Counselor, let me... I'm not the only one that feels this way. The Salarian Dalatras is livid. Some of these issues are hundreds of years old. Time to let go. Perhaps. Still, we can't help but feel that this summit is a waste of your time, and we can't afford to have it waste ours. We must focus our attention on the arrival of the Reapers. So no, the Asari will not be at your summit. Our alliance would be stronger with the Krogan. You need them. We all do. Good luck, Commander. And goodbye. Bitch. Commander, Admiral Hackett's available on VidCon. Oh, right, Admiral Hackett. Commander, have you retrieved the Primarch for your summit? Yes, sir. But the Asari are staying on the sidelines. They'll regret that. The time for unity is now. The Salarians will be there, though. You don't sound very optimistic. We expect the Krogan will be joining us, too. I see. Well, then you've got your hands full, Commander. Was there something else you needed to discuss? Uh, the attack on Earth. Have you pieced together how the Reapers hit Earth? It wasn't all that complicated, really. They surged through the relays and hit Artura station before we knew what was happening. From there, it was a short jump to the Sol system. Earth didn't stand a chance. Sending us to the Mars archives was a good call. Still doesn't make up for the fact that the Reapers nailed us to the wall. I sacrificed the entire second fleet to provide cover for the third and the fifth to retreat. Hell, I presided over the most devastating military defeat in human history. Oh, that's... wow, that puts it in perspective. How do you see us winning this war, Admiral? By making you the tip of the spear. I'm flattered, but the Normandy's just one ship. And a fast one. You can move quickly, hit a target, and leave before the enemy has time to react. It's an advantage, but can it win a war? It's the larger principle that matters. We'll never defeat the Reapers in a full frontal assault, Shepard. The battle against Sovereign three years ago took everything we had, and that was just one Reaper. I haven't forgotten. So I'll find their soft spots, avoid them where they're strong, and hit them where they're not. And when I find gaps in the armor, I'll hammer them with every soldier's ship and bullet we've got. How long can we keep that up? As long as it takes. The reality is, Shepard, everything I'm doing is a delaying action for you. I'm buying us time, keeping us in the game, while you gather what we need for this Protheum device. So keep at it. Uh, yeah, actually, let's talk about the Protheum device. Has your analysis of the Protheum device turned up anything? The arrow appears to be right. It's a weapon of some sort. A big one. Beyond that, we really can't say, other than it's going to be a hell of a thing to try and build. Do you think it's risky? building something like this when we don't even know what it does? To be honest, the thing scares the hell out of me, but the Reapers have forced our hand. Two centuries ago, scientists faced the same problem in the Second World War. They weren't sure what the atomic bomb might do. Some thought it could even ignite Earth's atmosphere, but they did it anyway. My God. Holy shit, can, can you imagine? Can you imagine the, the, a new experimental weapon and they they said, yeah, we could possibly ignite the entire globe should we use it? Yes. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> Any updates on Cerberus? There's still the wild card here. Hitting the archives on Mars suggests they're after the same thing we are. A way to defeat the Reapers. It didn't seem as if the elusive man was suggesting we appease them. Not like Saren did. You'd think we'd be on the same side, now more than ever. Cerberus has never played by the rules as we know them. I don't know what their agenda is, but it has nothing to do with humanity's best interests. The elusive man talked about controlling the Reapers. He seemed to think that's how we win this. He's wrong. Dead Reapers are how we win this. Doesn't mean hmm. he won't try. I saw your report on that Cerberus soldier you found on Mars. If the elusive man is good at one thing, it's finding new ways to subvert science. It's never worked for him before, and it won't now. Uh, that'll be everything. Nothing more, sir. Keep me posted. 
Pack it out. Uh, okay, so I got a few more people I can talk to. Uh, oh, the war terminal. Haven't used this. Right, and these are war assets. The people, weapons, armies, and fleets you've accumulated are your war assets. The overall readiness of the galaxy determines how effectively these assets will perform in the final battle. Oh, right. Yes, I've got to either do some multiplayer or the little kind of battle app thing that helps get my galactic readiness up. Uh, boy, we're getting hammered. Okay, so we got the, the alliance... The, yeah, the diff the Alliance is certainly the biggest asset we got right now. Diana Allers. Hmm. She's more of an asset than, than Diana is. Really? Hmm. And then Eden Prime support. Oh, hey. And then there's the Crucible itself. Javelin missile launchers. And then X Cerberus. Data liberated from a research. Uh, data liberated from a Cerberus research lab includes reports on the uh, uh, composition and strengths of various Reaper units. Alliance scientists are uh, fact checking the information, but it appears to be genuine. Uh, the Alliance military VIs uh, can use it to strategize against the uh, Reapers' ground forces. Oh yeah, that came from. Um, I've got a. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, when this first game first came out, there was an iPhone game, um, Mass Effect something or other. I can't remember what the name of it was. And at the end of the, if you beat the game, then it gives you that war asset. Commander, thank you for allowing me the use of your ship and for going along with this plan. Gareth mm -hmm. said he had to attend to the Normandy's weapon systems, something about calibrations. <laughs> Sounds like Garrus. Of course. I'm sorry to say the Asari Counselor won't be joining us. She thinks there's too much bad blood with the Krogan. She may be right. But there'll be a lot more blood. Real blood. If we don't try. When you put it that way. The sooner we have this summit, the sooner we'll know. Is there something else I can help you with? Uh, yeah, let's ask them all three of these. Uh, Turian, help for Earth. I understand this is a difficult time for you, Primarch, but Earth can't survive without reinforcements. Can I still count on your help? If the Krogan help us on Palavan, then I give you my word. How is it being the Primarch? Not what I imagined. The battle of all time is happening on Palavan, and I'm light years away, reading casualty reports in the millions. If I'm going to die, I want to be with my men. So there's no doubt we fought to the last soul. I can relate. I understand. Leaving Earth to save it. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'm not surprised. Garrus speaks highly of you. You never asked to be a leader. Yet your people will die if you refuse. We find ourselves in similar circumstances. That's true. Let's hope the spirits grant us the strength to see it through. Uh, did I ask the new duties? Wait, did I already do that? How is it being the Primarch? Not what I imagined. Oh, no, I did that. I'm going to die. How are things on Palavan? The casualty reports are staggering. The Reapers are using our own tactics against us. Destroy the enemy with overwhelming force. I've seen the same on Earth. The strategist in me admires their brutality. The Turian in me knows I'm watching the destruction of 15,000 years of civilization. My civilization. Thank you, Primarch. My thoughts are with Palavan. And mine with Earth. Ah, uh, who else can I talk to? Uh, Specialist Trainer and Joker. Oh, right, there's something interesting downstairs. Hmm... <laughs> Yeah, we're going to take a look at that. He mentioned something about Edie being compromised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's... There it is. Edie just went offline. What do you mean, offline? I don't know. She's not responding. I can't access the AI core diagnostics. You better get down to deck three. 
Commander, comm systems are going haywire. Whatever's happening is centered on deck three. I'm See if you can get to Edie. I'll check the AI core. Whatever's happening, it's taken Edie off. All right, better get down there. <laughs> uh, AI core. There we are. Geth pyros have flamethrowers that burn enemies at close range. Target their fuel tanks and use overload and, and sabotage. Good to know. I'm hearing a crazy noise. What the hell is that? Holy shit, that's... Holy shit, I might have to pause it. It sounds like my Xbox is going into overdrive. Holy shit, just a second, actually. Okay, I'm back. Um, Alright, so... That noise that I thought it was coming from my Xbox wasn't coming from the Xbox at all. Um, upstairs, though I have an, uh, an aquarium, my wife's aquarium. The filter... I don't even know how this works, but the filter was making this screechy noise that was that I could hear all the way from down here. It just go upstairs and uh, appear into the dark, the darkness, and the the fish tank is screaming like a fucking banshee. Scared the piss out of me. No idea what the hell was going on. <laughs> is everything okay? That's what I'm gonna find out. Joker. What's that sound? Fire extinguishers, Commander. Could be an electrical fire or something. <laughs> I'm going in. What's that? Primos. Oh, you think it could be the bearing in the pump? Oh, okay. Oh, Talk to good me. advice. Thank you. <laughs> That's Is right. Is there a particular topic you wish to discuss, Shepard? Yes, Edie is a hot robot Edie? now. <laughs> yes. You're in Dr. Eva's body. Not all of me, but I have control of it. It was not a seamless transition. I guess not. A transition? You blacked out on us for a while there. Correct. When we brought this unit on board, I began a background process to search for its information on the Prothean device. This eventually triggered a trap. A backup power source and CPU activated, and the unit attempted physical confrontation. Fortunately, I was able to gain root access and repurpose it as I saw fit. During this nice. process, it struggled. Thus, the fire. Nice going. Uh, I don't... Wait, I can't tell if that's a sarcastic nice going or that was dangerous. Um... Uh, well, if it means having full access to the Prothean data, oh, it's good. Dead. Good work. I reasoned along similar lines. That's so it. if you're in there, are you still in the ship? I exist primarily within the ship. For optimal control, this unit should remain within Normandy's broadcast or tight beam range. Are you planning to take that body somewhere? Normandy's weaponry is not suited to every combat situation. This platform could provide limited fire ground support. I you mean you could come with us? Correct. This body could accompany you to areas the Normandy cannot reach. I think that was a great idea for for Bioware to implement that. Um, what's that, just from the description? Oh, I see, okay. So do, do you just happen to know a lot about... Um, about aquarium stuff, or do, or do you just know how like small, small you know machines work? Um, correct, this body can accompany you in areas. Um, we can do that. I'll tell you when I need it. Excellent. I will run tests to ensure that it matches or exceeds the capabilities of organic squad mates. However, my first step should be restoring functionality to the Normandy to reassure the crew that all is normal. Just. Don't be surprised if the crew is a little wary of your new body. It was shooting at them a little while ago. An excellent point. I will take it to the bridge. Joker will also want to see it. <laughs> yeah, he will. 
On that, we can agree. Ooh, we got thunder and lightning out there. Yeesh. Uh, what's that? I had some aquariums a long time ago. It's uh, one of the few parts that could scream. Yeah, that was a good uh, good description of it. It was, yeah, very scream-like. <laughs> like, I'd, when I first heard it, like, was it uh, worked with electrical, etc. Uh, a whole lot over the years. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, isn't that convenient? I've got some... Uh, got some... Got some advice right in the stream. That's awesome, but yeah, like I, I just heard, like I, I thought that the that the Xbox 360 was just overworking itself, uh, but then I was, you know, I was, you know, getting my ears closer, and I could, it wasn't coming from there. It was all the way from upstairs. You're positive you don't want to come over and talk. No, the gun battery is nice and quiet. If I throw down some rugs, it'll get downright cozy. Garrus, <laughs> I'll be fine, Leora. Just gathering some thoughts. All right. <laughs> My advice is guaranteed to be worth what you paid for it. <laughs> well, thank you for that as well. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, yeah, I, I just, I just unplugged the filter for now. I figure, I figure, you know, over, you know, overnight it should probably be okay. Uh, this terminal contains non-essential correspondence from your allied forces. Doctor Tassoni has granted you access. Okay, I might lead. I might read those in a sec, actually. A Prothean, a living, breathing Prothean, right below me. He's not what I expected. Me neither. He was a little cold when I tried to talk. I understand the shock of waking up again. His species gone, but a Prothean Shepherd. There's so much he could tell us. Uh, oh, any intel over here? Upgrades, uh, nope. Okay. What's that? Uh, depends on the fish crowding, uh, but should be okay uh, for a day or three. Um, if fish are coming to the surface uh, for air, I'd do something fast. Oh, uh, okay, okay, good to know. Good to know as well. Um... Uh, what was I gonna say about that? Um, yeah, there aren't too many fish in there. It's it's a it's a pretty pretty big tank, and there's uh, there's only three you know fairly small fish in there. So I think it should be okay until we can figure out a solution. Uh, Garrus, oh yeah, Garrus, I can talk to Garrus now. Got to talk to Garrus. It's probably too busy calibrating. I know, Primark. I'm seeing the same numbers myself. They don't look good. We have to turn this around and fast. Well, you can trust Shepard, sir. If anybody can get the Krogan to cooperate, it's him. He's an old friend of Erdnot Rex. Let's just hope friendship still counts for something in this war. I'm sure it will, sir. What's that? Uh, filtration, uh, not the biggest, fastest issue, but uh, aeration... Uh, could be if crowded. Okay. All right, good to know. Garrus, didn't waste any time getting to work, I see. After what I've been through lately, calibrating a giant gun is a vacation. Gives me something to focus on. We're going to need you for more than your aim. Oh, I'm ready for it. But I'm pretty sure we'll still need giant guns. And lots of them. Sovereign didn't go down without a fight. I doubt a thousand more of his friends will be any different. Still not convinced I should have left Palavin behind. Uh, yeah, I can relate. There was a boy back on Earth. Couldn't have been more than six or seven. I watched him die as the Normandy escaped the attack. Somehow I'm still alive. And he's not. Being right about the Reapers has never felt much like a victory, has it? We both knew this fight would be tough. Damned if the Reapers haven't delivered. At least my government listened to me. Or pretended to. They finally gave me a task force as a token to shut me up. So you're their expert advisor now? Just followed your example, Shepard. Yell loud enough and someone will eventually come over to see what all the fuss is about. Not that they'll actually do anything about it. Until hell shows up at their door. 
Then they put you in charge. <laughs> Not like the old days, is it? Rogue Spectre and CSEC agents running and gunning outside the lines, making it up as we went along? We're actually respectable now. <laughs> uh, we earned it. We've lost enough friends trying to make sure this day never came. I'd say we've all earned some respect. Then the first Reaper we take out with this gun, it's in their honor. Just give the word. Something else you want to talk about? Uh, oh, wow, I get to go through the whole list with them. You mentioned you still had family on Palavan. My father is there. Sister, too. How long has it been since you heard from them? Long enough to be worried. Hmm. I'm sure they're okay. That's the thing about getting old, Shepard. The platitudes get just as old. Pretty soon, blind hope is all we'll have left. And I hate being blind. I know you don't have any illusions about what we're up against, Garrus. How do you rate our chances? I know it looks bad now, but I think we can win this, Shepard. For the first time since we met, we're not alone in the fight. It's something I learned long ago in CSEC. An imminent and painful death has a way of motivating people. Instead of questioning your every word, whole civilizations are going to be begging you to save them. After what's happened to Palavin, you still believe that? I didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. It's something Turians are taught from birth. If just one survivor is left standing at the end of a war, then the fight was worth it. But humans want to save everyone. In this war, that's not going to happen. Ah, uh, Garrisk's task force. So what's this Reaper task force you've been running? After what happened to you out there in Batarian space, I knew time was running out for all of us. The Citadel Council was a dead end, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I went to my father. He used to work for CSEC, didn't he? I seem to remember that the two of you didn't see eye to eye. To put it mildly. But he still had heavy pull in the Turian government. The Primarch, well, the old one, was a friend of his. So I went to my father and laid out everything we knew about the Reapers, from Saren all the way to the Collector base. <laughs> Let me guess. He laughed in your face. Amazingly, no. He just listened. My father may have been a pain in the ass about rules and regulations, but he never let politics cloud his judgment. If the connections were there, he wouldn't deny them. And he saw what we always knew. The Reapers were coming. I'm glad someone finally agreed. He did more than agree. He took it to the Primarch. I like his style. Except the Primarch wasn't as convinced. My father kept pushing and finally got him to commit some token resources. And if you call them a task force, it sounds like you did something about it. Any results? What did you do with it? As much as I could get away with. And a little more. We hardened our lines of communications, expanded emergency stockpiles across the colonies, improved our early warning detection protocols. You think it helped? I'd like to think it bought our fleet some extra time. We'll know when this war is over. And then finally, Primarch Vickness. So you can vouch for this new Primarch? Well, even if I couldn't, you go to war with the army you have. Will he live up to his word? I've never known Victus to lie. Play fast and loose with strategy, maybe, but betray an ally. Not his style. Then if he did try, well, we'll just find another Primarch. Maybe it could be you. I noticed generals saluting you, Garrus. How far down the line of succession are you these days? Let's not go there. <laughs> Primarch Vicarian, honored war hero. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild Palavin when this is over. Yeah, somebody who knows how to hold a hammer. <laughs> That's all for now, Garrus. It's damn good to have you back. Wouldn't miss this fight for any. Now, I'm sure somebody screwed up something down here. I want to get the old girl back in fighting shape. Good to be back on board, Jen. More calibration to take it. Alright, so just a quick little thing with uh, Joker, and then, uh, then we're moving into the next fight. Oh, yeah, I didn't talk to anybody in the shuttle bay. Eh, I'll talk to them next time.
there'll be more missions, there'll be more dialogues. Ooh, oh, excuse me. So, Joker, <laughs> what do you think of Edie now? <laughs> hey, Commander, check out my co pilot. <laughs> She plugged herself into Cerberus Tech without authorization. Well, technically, she is Cerberus Tech, so... That's not helping, Joker. I've run the checks, Commander. Not exactly what I meant, based but... in the Normandy. Running this body just gives her a little more flexibility. Sweet, sweet flexibility. I am right here, Jeff. <laughs> yes, you are, Edie. Yes, you are. <laughs> Oh, the the other response was kind of better. He, he said something about baking a cake, but anyway. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, all right, so now we'll move on to the mission. That was fun, but I'll have to pause it there. If you enjoy my content and want to see more, do some of the stuff that the screen is telling you, and check out my other stuff. If you want to see me play live, check out the links in the description. Come talk to me, maybe even play with me. That is it for this episode, and I will see you in the next game.